Marco Polo is famous for his adventurous journey to the East, which he documented in the travels of Marco Polo. Surprisingly, he wrote this book while he was in prison. After returning from his journey in 1295, he was captured and imprisoned for leading a Venetian ship into battle against Genoa. In prison, he met Rustic Hello of Pisa, a talented writer, and together they wrote Polo's life story. When they were released in 1299, they had completed the book that made Marco Polo famous. Marco Polo wasn't actually the first European to travel to the Far East. A monk named Giovanni de Pien del Carpini made it to China over 20 years before Polo did. He even got to meet the great Khan of the Mongol Empire. Other Catholic messengers, like William of Rubruck, also made the journey to the East in the hopes of converting the Mongols to Christianity. These early travelers were influenced by the legend of Prester John, a mythical king who was said to rule over a Christian empire in the East. Polo even mentioned this made-up king in his book and claimed that he had battled against the Mongol ruler Genghis Khan. Before Marco Polo was born in 1254, his father Niccolò and uncle Mafia went on a trading trip to Asia. They came back to Venice in 1269, and that's when 15-year-old Marco finally met Niccolò. Even though he didn't really know his father, Marco decided to join them on their second trip in 1271. They only planned to stay in the Far East for a short time, but ended up traveling together in Asia for over 20 years. The Polos were not just merchants, they were also emissaries for the Mongol Emperor Kublai Khan. They had a special bond with the Great Khan, who even sent Marco to China and Southeast Asia as a tax collector and special messenger. The Polos were able to move freely within the Mongol Empire, and Marco was given a special gold tablet that allowed them to use the imperial horses in lodgings. This official passport made them honored guests of the Great Khan. When Marco Polo came back from Asia, he wrote down all the cool animals he saw, like elephants, monkeys, and crocodiles. He thought the crocodiles were like big, scary snakes that could eat a person in one bite. But sometimes he got mixed up and thought the animals were from stories, like when he saw a rhinoceros and thought it was a unicorn. Many people think Marco Polo brought pasta to Italy, but it was already there. However, he did introduce Europeans to many Chinese inventions. He told people about paper money, which Europe started using after he came back. He also talked about coal, which Europe didn't use much until the 18th century, and he might have been the one to bring eyeglasses to the West. At the same time, he gave a very detailed account of the Mongol post system, which was a big network of checkpoints and couriers that helped Kublai Khan run his huge empire. Marco Polo and his family faced many challenges on their journey back to Italy. The elderly Kublai Khan didn't want to let them go because he was worried it would make him look weak. Eventually, they were allowed to leave in 1292, but only if they agreed to escort a Mongol princess to Persia by sea. This turned out to be the most dangerous part of their journey, with hundreds of lives lost on the deadly sea voyage. After leaving the Mongol territory, Marco, Niccolo and Mafio didn't have the protection of Kublai Khan anymore. When they were in modern-day Turkey, the local government stole around 4,000 Byzantine gold coins from them. Even though they lost a lot, the Polos still had enough of their stuff to come back home in 1295 as rich guys. It's said that the Venetians hid most of their gems by sewing them into the linings of their coats. Some people didn't believe Marco Polo's detailed descriptions of the royal palace at Xanadu, the city of Quinsai, now Hangzhou, and the wonders of the Orient. By the time he was old, his fellow Venetians thought he was making up stories. They had good reason to doubt him because Polo and his writer, Rustic Hello, tended to exaggerate and make things up. For example, Polo would often pretend to be part of battles and palace drama. While most historians think most of his book is true, some say it's all made up and that Polo never even went to China. But Marco always insisted he was telling the truth. Even on his deathbed, he supposedly said, I didn't even tell half of what I saw. When Marco Polo and his family were heading back to Venice, Kublai Khan died. This caused the Mongol Empire to start falling apart, and it meant that Marco would never be able to go back to the Far East. After Kublai Khan's death, tribal groups took back control of the Silk Road, which was a major trade route between East and West. This made it really risky for anyone to travel that way. In fact, Marco Polo didn't even leave Venice for the last 20 years of his life. 